Hi, ladies. Thank you very much. And despite, despite everybody, the five-day 500-plus point decline, stocks are still up considerably for the year. Take a look at the numbers. This will make you feel just a little bit better. Dow is up nearly 5% so far year to date. S&P up 8%. NASDAQ up almost 15%. But here's the question. Should you be locking in those profits and just sell in May and go away? Does that market mantra hold up this year? Jeffrey Hirsch is editor-in-chief of Stock Traders Almanac. And also with me on set for the hour, I have Todd Schoenberger, managing principal at the Black Bay Group. Gentlemen, a lot of questions here. But, Jeff, to you mm-hmm. first. Yeah. The predictions. What do you say? Should we be getting out of the market now? We gave our sales signal back on April 3rd. So, uh, you know, the, the technical indicator has crossed over uh, right in the end of the best six months. You know, April's the last, last month of the best six months. So we were expecting to come a little early. The big February had us concerned. And, um, you know, we come, came a long way since our October 6th buy signal. So we're okay taking some profits here. All right. So taking some profits here. Yeah. Todd, that tells me defense. that he's saying he's he get defensive and we can talk about some sectors. But, Todd, that says to me then that we need to be getting out of the market now. Maybe you get a little bit of a bump up today and take it off the table. Head for the hills right now. If there's any strength in this rally today, you definitely want to sell out right now. <clears throat> Look, we have been the, bearish. the markets were rallying in the first quarter because of hopes of quantitative easing three. We already heard from the chairman that's not going to happen. Now we have to step back and look at earnings right now. Yeah, Alcoa was a beat. Big deal. We're moving forward next week. I'm telling you, earnings this, she, this season is going to be it's decimating to the markets right now. You want to get out while you can. But Jeff, there, mm-hmm. there are certain things about the economy and the markets that are different uh, from years past. And look, in 2011, I mean, it was a rough year. If you look back over history from uh, we lost 20% between May and October. So if you yep. sold in May, went away last year, Perfect you saved play. yourself a lot of pain, Five obviously. straight down in a row. But things are different this year. The economy is improving. Nicole was just showing us the housing sector. Mm-hmm. Those stocks have been doing a lot better. Are we, is it a little more extreme to take the position of jump out completely this year um, when things are a little bit better? You don't better? have to always jump out completely. We tighten up stops. We take some downside protection. We'll look at the IEF, the uh, you know 7 to 10-year iShares, um, uh, Treasury iShares. Uh, and also the TLT. There's a new fund, um, uh, relatively new, uh, Active Bear. It's HDGE. That's one of our downside protection trades. That's a, and that's a fund that, sh- that we should short you with that yeah. You're shorting stocks. And so it's a way to I do it in a fund. I spoke with them. And they're, 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 they have a really nice uh, methodology, and, and, I, and I think that they've, they've got it right. And that's a, it's a great place to be for downside protection. So you don't have to just sell everything outright. Tighten up, take some profits. And I do think we might get some disappointment from the economic arena also. Okay, so you're Selling, you're saying you're going to look at some look at some treasuries, mm-hmm. short sell stocks. Todd, you're saying to get defensive. You mean sector defensive? Well, you can do that, but you really want to stick with a money manager that can actually go short and long at the same time, similar to what Jeff mm-hmm. was talking about, because you, you really need to be protective on both sides of the ball. I mean, you want to know whether this is the time to sell. If it is, then still you can take advantage of it by moving into short positions like that short ETF that Jeff was mentioning. Okay, so ETFs, and I like the, I like the HDGE, I like the ticker on that yep. one, but what about the traditional safety plays that we saw investors flock to, Todd, in 2011. That was healthcare. That was consumer staples. What about those sectors? Right. Well, you're always going to look at staples. I mean, that's always going to be a big winner. You can even look at stocks that mimic, mimic the U.S. economy. Not in the first quarter, though, Todd. I got to say, but look at the first quarter of 2012. It wasn't about staples. It wasn't about healthcare. It was about financials. Of I mean, course it was. What took us higher was Bank of America, J.P. Morgan. Because you have hopes of a Apple. QE3, yeah. a third round. Look, if that's going to be the case, you're going to have lower interest rates. That's how the financials are going to make all their money. You want to stay away from the bulge bracket financials right now, Cheryl. I've said it a million times with you. I'm telling you, just head for the hills, sell into the strength. Don't even but go there right now. But if I listened right to you about the financials, I would have missed out on the first three months of 2012. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm Schoenberger. telling you. Yeah, but it's gambling. You might as well just go to the track. I'm telling you, the daily double would do better for you than to buy a Bank of America right now. Look at the regional <laughs> banks if you want to get into the financials. All right, Jeff, you wrote a book. You wrote a new book. Uh, about yeah. about uh, about the markets. Mm-hmm. You're calling for Dow 38,000. Yep. Am I going to be alive when that call comes true? Sure. I, it came out last year, just about this time last year. Uh, the, 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 the time period is by the year 2025. But within that forecast, there's several years of sideways uh, trading action, and I think we're going to be backing and filling for quite a few years. I, 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 
right now it's about five to six years. Um, I have us, you know, starting that big upturn in like 2017, 2018, after we get through a couple more election year cycles okay. and, and, and that sort of thing. Okay, so you're saying that 2017, 2018, so, so for those of us that are willing to hang in there for a few more years that don't need the money right away. You wait for the opportunities, okay. the buying opportunities to set up your, your you know, long-term holdings. When the Dow's now below 10,000 or there are bats or somebody declares bear market on television, that's a time to load up stocks. <laughs> when, somebody, when somebody like Todd says what on television? Well, <laughs> yeah, head for the hills. Look, Jeff's right. It will hit 38,000 in the Dow if you add Apple to, to the index. It may get there. Well, yeah. well, that, okay, that's a good point. You, know, you both brought up Apple. That's a great point about a stock like that, which has been one of the reasons that you've seen the NASDAQ right. up still 15% mm -hmm. year to date. It was up 17% of the, the height. Brilliant the, company. The top of the market. It should have its own well. index. I mean, look, it, this it, is it's the whole market. It is the entire market, and you'd be a fool not to buy Apple. And believe it or not, it's undervalued at this price. You want to buy it at undervalued. this price. Undervalued. Undervalued. The Undervalued. Came out with a call earlier this week, Jeff, that said Apple is, where's the new product going to come from? I call That's that career thing, suicide. That's, you do not do that. I, I, the one thing I'm concerned about is that there's not a whole lot on the docket for them between, you know, the, I, the iPad 3 and the iPhone 5 in the fall. So there's no new news, new product coming out. So maybe you get a better opportunity to buy the, it over the, the next company, few months. The, if the company did not come out with a new product for the next 100 years, it would still be in business. That's how oh, wealthy they business. are. That's how great they are. They don't have a lot of employees, a lot oh. of overhead, 40 plus percent on their margins. I mean, it's incredible. You want a windfalls you, profits tax. That's where that's who should be getting hit with it. If you're running for the hills with the rest of the market and Apple's the whole market, you're going to want to look for Apple at a little bit cheaper. At least. Buy Apple. You want to buy an Apple product. Everybody wants Apple products. That research and motion product, the BlackBerry is, is, uh, is dead. Away. It's a dinosaur. Stick with Apple products. They are a category killer with all of their products. Overall, let me ask so. you guys this. Overall, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't seem to be out of the woods yet. I do say that 2012, from an overall perspective, is better. But still, there are concerns about Spain. Mm -hmm. Not about yep. Greece right now, but about Spain. There's concerns about the Fed. No more bond buying. They're backing away. What does that mean for the next six months, guys? I'm seeing a soft patch here through the uh, Q2, Q3 period uh, as the election campaigning heats up and then, uh, you know, rally through the year. If, if it looks like uh, Obama's going to win, October will, will be stronger. If he gets ousted, November will be stronger. So wait, so we're going to get a market rally if President Obama loses there's usually November. a November rally when the incumbent gets, um, you know, doesn't get reelected because the, the, the country's celebrated. They've got somebody new in there. OK, Jeff's right about that. I would say the rally will begin, though, in January next year if Obama is if he loses the election. However, though, for the rest of the year with the debt bombs that you mentioned, Cheryl, that's brilliant because that is going to be a long outstanding issue for us to have to deal with. I love the predictions from both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Jeff Hirsch, great to see you again, Good by the way. You. Come back anytime. Will Todd, we're stuck with you for the rest of the hour. <laughs>